be my third review of cards. And jumping right into it, we're going to go to Fate Spinner. It is a 5-mana five 5-3 five, Druid minion, and we have a brand new mechanic, Choose a Death Rattle Secretly. So you have one of two choices of different Death Rattle effects, and your opponent's not going to know what it is until it triggers. So the two choices are deal three damage to all minions, or give them plus two, plus two. Now, these are very polarizing effects. You have one that does AoE damage, one that does AoE buff, and we have not seen an AoE buff before, so it also works on your opponent's minions. So when your opponent sees you play this card, they're going to think, oh, my opponent has a bunch of minions on the board, they're going to choose plus two, plus two to buff them, so I shouldn't kill it. Or, if you have a bunch of minions and your opponent plays Fate Spinner, they're going to think, oh, well, they're going to make it to where it deals damage to my board. And you can kind of have a little bit of counterplay in mind. You can actually select the opposite and make force your opponent to think that you have something else in hand. I really like the idea des design behind the card. I think the card by itself is kind of weak, but it does have some really interesting uh, plays to go with it. It'll be really interesting to see the play of this card, and I think that you're going to see some real, some people getting tripped up about. They think it might be one effect, but it might actually be the other. The next card they revealed is Hadronox. It's a nine mana three seven beast with a death rattle. Holy crap! Is this a slow card? Um, but its effect is really strong. Summon your taunt minions that died this game. So it's like an Azoth for taunts, but it's slower. Um, but it does have synergy with Nazoth, so you can play this card and then have it die to summon your taunt minions, and then you can play Nazoth to summon Hadronox, which will then die again to summon your taunt minions again. That's a thing. Um, it being a beast is very interesting since it has synergy with Menagerie Warden, so this is probably one of the best ones to Menagerie Warden, since you can get two Hadronoxes. Um, now, summoning taunt minions... Druid runs some pretty impactful taunt minions, but it might not be exactly what it looks like when you're thinking of certain other cards. For example, when you play the seven mana minion for the big taunt that you just have, that you find out, um, Ancient of the War, it's actually a five five body. It doesn't have taunt on its by itself. It gains taunt when you choose the taunt effect. Um, so it's not a taunt minion, so it will not come back from this effect. However, Druid of the Claw, which can transform into a 4-6 with taunt, will actually be affected by Hadronox, so it will come back, since it is a taunt minion. Uh, this has natural synergy with other taunts, like Infested Tauren, like Sludge Belchers, um, a bunch of real, like, really messed up taunts that Druid can have access to, like the iron bark protector of all things so will this card be played in the iron bark protector like defensive ramp druid uh it looks like it's trying to incentivize that deck but really i'm not sure i don't think there's that many minions that have very impactful effects that also have taunt this looks like it's going to be summoning a bunch of really minor stuff like sinjin shield master power level so I think that we might actually have to see some new taunts come out for this thing to see a good effect. Natural taunt minions. Um, buff effects don't really work with this one. So the, the uh, <laughs> hunters get a new card. It's a bear shark! <laughs> oh, our worst nightmares have come true. Save the universe. Uh, three mana, four, three, can't be targeted by spells. Beast. Common for hunter. Um, well, this is a zombie if there ever was one. Um, it's, it's very meme-worthy for sure, but it's actually kind of an okay card. Uh, it's a, it's an aggressive stat line. A 4-3 is actually fairly good for a beast, and it's, it's curves very nicely into Houndmaster, and having a 6-5 taunt beast is, on turn 4 is, sheesh, I'd be scared of that. Um, this is also the only beast in the game that has can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. So when you actually play your Death Knight Hunter card, you get to build a zombie beast, and this is the selection that gets posted up for the can't be targeted effect. This is like the keyword uh, 
of the beasts. So you can mix a be another beast with can't be targeted and make it more defensive or aggressive against spell decks. Uh, the viability of this card in Constructed could actually depend on whether or not there are a lot of spell decks out there that have targeting effects. But otherwise, I think it's just kind of okay. It is kind of okay in Arena, but there are a lot of three drops that Hunter has access to, so it's very crowded. But I think it actually does fine. Um, also, <laughs> this is not a man bear shark. Uh, I think it would be OP if it was a man bear shark. Just, just my opinion. Abominable Bowman. Yes. Um, he's not made of snow. He is an undead. He is abominable. A 7-mana 6-7 death rattle. Summon a random friendly beast that died this game. Uh, it's another slow effect. This time it's for Hunter. Hunter and slow effects have never really gotten along before. And we've seen quite a bit in this expansion so far uh, with the Hunter Hero Power. With the Hunter Hero card. And now this card. So uh, I think they're just trying to push like a board-centric Hunter deck. Now this card has some pretty good synergy with... I can't think of the card's name, but it was the Ungoro card that uh, activates a friendly minion's death rattle. So, and that card costs three mana, so you can play this card and then play that card on three mana and get a f random beast. Now, the synergies with this card um, exist in those death rattly hunter decks, but at the same time, the effect isn't all that strong. Unless you're looking for specifically cards like Savannah High Main, like Charge Beasts, like Impactful Charge Beasts, it makes me kind of think like you, you really have to build around this card. I wouldn't necessarily say build a deck around this card, although you could probably possibly run a spell heavy hunter deck with traps, with weapons, with spells, and uh, very few key beasts that you can use to synergize with this effect, which uh, Secret Hunter was always a thing in the past, and it ran very few beasts. Uh, it also summons up beasts from Animal Companion. You know, you summon a, summon a Huffer from this card. You know, it's pretty good. Uh, any uh, Call of the Wild after Abomination, Abominable Bowman, I think it's okay. You can definitely summon your Zom Beast creations from this card, too. So that'll be interesting to play with. Again, it's slow. Again, it's a high health death rattle minion. Uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see with this one. Cold Wraith. It's a 3-mana three 3-4 three, mage minion. Battle cry if an enemy is frozen, draw a card. Uh, it's very good value if you're playing like a freezing kind of mage. So I actually think this could be used in a control variant of Mage that doesn't run combos. Uh, surprisingly enough, I think it's not that great in Freeze Mage. So because when you freeze a minion, you're either stalling out the board, you're not really drawing cards at that point, or you're comboing with Doomsayer so you can kill off everything. Uh, you, and you intend to be doing that in the early stages of the game, so playing a 3-mana draw card isn't really going to fit the mana curve. So I think this would be more for like a tempo kind of control variant of mage that doesn't rely on classic freeze mage standards. Um, it is also a 3-mana three 3-4 three, common for mage with an upside. That's not something I want to see in arena. So, um, but it is conditional. There's not really a whole lot of incentive of freezing a minion proactively just because... Uh, usually freezing effects accompany effects like Frostbolt, which deal 3 damage, which you don't usually intend to use when you freeze a minion. You intend to kill a minion with it. So, I'm not sure how the draw effect of this card is, but it's a 3-mana three 3-4. Three, It'll be experimented with. It's a solid body. Uh, Ghastly Conjurer, 4-mana 2-6. Battlecry, add a mirror image spell to your hand. Now, this actually is the mirror image card, not a minion. It's the card. It puts it in your hand. It puts a spell in your hand that didn't start in your deck. Okay? Think about other cards that work with that, like the Mage Quest. This card actually works pretty well in Mage Quest. Um, it's a 4-mana 2-6. It's not terrible stats. It's not great, but you get a 1-mana spell which summons two zero twos 2s with Taunt. 
Uh, so that's five mana, two, six. That summons two zero twos. That's pretty good, actually. This might make for kind of an anti aggro y kind of mage, but it also, like I said, it puts a very cheap spell in your deck or in your hand. And it activates combos because cheap spells work very well with Archmage Antonitis. Mirror Image was also one of those cards that worked very well with Archmage Antonitis since two taunt minions would stop combos and uh, charge finishers. So it. Yeah, I mean, I like it. It's really good. I think it's playable. I'm looking forward to playing with it. And then the mages get their legendary Syndragosa. Eight mana, eight, eight dragon. Uh, eight mana dragon and mage. Now, mages don't currently have any dragons. So if you're playing a dragon mage deck that happens to have a two mana minion that discovers a dragon, and since class cards have, what is it, like a 400% occurrence bonus for discoveries. Um, yeah, you're going to discover this minion a lot, since it's the only dragon in Mage currently. It's an 8-mana card, and its battle cry is summoned two zero two 2 Frozen Champions. Now, what the heck are those? These little guys right here. Death Rattle, add a random legendary minion to your hand. Now, this is the new... I, I don't want to I don't want to bite myself for saying this, but this is the new Dr. Boom of the set. Uh, eight mana eight eight that summons two one one, two zero ones. Now here's something that I haven't really gotten much clarification on is that the card text of Syndragosa has summoned two zero one frozen champions. Now if you notice, frozen champion is also the name of the minion, but there's no card text on it that says that it's frozen when it comes into play. But the card text of Syndragosa has the word frozen in bold. So this kind of has me thinking that the minion is actually frozen, which could have some implications, even though it's a zero attack minion, it is frozen. You can ping it off yourself with your hero power. So on turn 10, you can play this card and get a random legendary. Sweet. Uh, I think it would be very problematic if it was actually a nine mana card. And it's a dragon. Like I mentioned, it has a lot of dragon synergies, so I actually think it would see play in a lot of mage decks, a lot of control decks. Um, it might be good enough just to be played by itself. Now, is this card better than Mediv? Mediv is currently the 8-mana mage minion of choice, even though it's neutral. Uh, would Mediv be run in the same deck as Syndragosa? I'm not sure. I think Medivh kind of fits more in a tempo style of spell mage. This is more of a board control, I'm going to drag the game out as long as I can mage deck. So I honestly think this and Medivh would not fit in the same deck, therefore I think it could fit in its... I think it would actually fit in a control variant of mage. We have Leeching Poison. Two mana, give your weapon lifesteal. Um... Nah, I don't like the card. I really don't. Yeah, rogues need lifesteal. Yeah, I can kind of see them using lifesteal for a weapon. But on average, you're having a 1-mana, one 1-2 one weapon with lifesteal. So on average, you'd only be healing for 2 with this card. You would literally have to run a card like Assassin's Blade for this card to be any good. And you would have to be running other weapon buffs like Deadly Poison. Like you would have to run a weapon with Deadly Poison and Leeching Poison and have more than two attacks for this card to even be close. So yeah, I think it's bad. It's also kind of bad in the arena. Um, I like the concept, though. But I think they could have done more with the spell. Maybe if they had a 2-mana like, 2-2 two 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 minion that gave your weapon lifesteal. Uh, yeah, I just... Yeah, I'm not a fan. Voodoo Hexer. Now this is the... Shaman Freeze minion we have been waiting for, right? Right? Well, maybe not. It's a 5-mana 2-7, which is kind of weak for stats. Taunt. Freeze an enemy character... Freeze any character damaged by this minion. So that's a water, water elemental effect. Um, water elemental stats are 3-6. So you're trading it for a 2-7, gaining one more mana, but you, get, but you give it with Taunt. Um, now, on one hand, you have this minion that can stop your opponent from gaining too much momentum on the board. 
But the converse of it is that if the minion isn't, if this doesn't trade into a minion when the other minion attacks it, like if the other minion doesn't survive, doesn't die, it survives, but it's frozen. So it loses the attack. But if you still can't deal with it, you're either going to have to attack it again or clear it off with some weak little spell. Um, and I don't think this synergizes very well with the weapon. The uh, Icebreaker card, which can destroy a frozen minion when your hero attacks it. Uh, well, at that point, you've done three damage to it. So what value out of a weapon are you wanting to get for an, destroying a minion if it has more than three health? Um, I'm thinking it has to have something like six health, maybe seven health for you to have this minion attack it or that attack this minion and then you trade it with a weapon to kill it off. Because at that point, the weapon is dealing five damage effectively. So I think you'd have to have another way of freezing effectively. Now, shamans have frost shock and glacial shard is and still going to be around. We're still going to have all the cards that we've had in the previous meta. Uh, we're just adding in a bunch of this stuff. So they, there are other proactive ways for utilizing Shaman Freeze effects. This card is really so-so. I think it's worse than average. The fact that it has Taunt may be a little bit of a redeeming quality, but then again, Earth Elemental had Taunt, and it was a bigger body, a much bigger body. Shamans have a lot of very big bodies, so why this one is understated for its mana cost is very surprising, just because it can freeze. I, Eh, it's okay. Bring it on. This is the last card I'll reveal today. It is a two-mana warrior spell. Now, I got really hyped when I saw the card, because I was like, oh my god, you can gain ten mana. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can gain ten armor. Um, reduce the cost of minions in your opponent's hand by two? Ouch. That's really terrible. Okay, you think about it one way. You gain a bunch of armor, but you incentivize your opponent to play out their minions by reducing all of them by two. Every single minion in your opponent's hand will be reduced by two. All of their small minions, all of the big minions, all of the medium-sized minions. Um, it's the opposite of what you want to do with the Nerubian card that just came out. And here's the problem with that. If you're fighting an aggressive deck, they will empty out their hand on the next turn. I'm not kidding. So if you cannot clear their board with a brawl after you play this card, you lose the game. If you're playing a control deck, you basically just enabled all of their combos. You enabled Archmage Antonidas at 5 mana. You're enabling Malagos at 7 mana. You're enabling Lyra the Sun Shard at 3 mana. What? Yeah, so... This card has some serious drawback. One card gaining 10 armor is really kind of okay. Um, we already had a card in the last, in the Ungoro expansion, the Ironhide. Uh, one mana gained 5 armor, and that was a spectacular card. Not. Um, you do have this card, which does double the effect, so you can gain a lot of armor in a short amount of time. The problem is, is if your opponent has any card to follow it up with this, and you're not prepared for it, you just outright lose the game. Um, this card is absolutely terrible in Arena. Do not play it. And that is it for my review of the, my third review of these new cards. Now, by the time you get to see this video, they've probably already released another dozen or so. I am a little bit behind, but um, stay tuned as I will be working over the weekend to make another video for those cards. So I hope to see you again soon, and we look forward to seeing you online.